Hey, good morning. Wherever you're watching from this morning, it's morning where we are. And uh, On This Hill, podcast of Church on the Hill. And uh, it's the last week of summer. We're sad about that. But um, we love fall in Oregon, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. My guest today is Emily Dempster. And thanks for coming, spending an hour or so with us. Mm -hmm. And Emily, we don't know each other super well, but we have a lot of mutual friends because Emily attends Salem Heights Church, but she also runs Equipped to Counsel Ministry, which we're going to be talking about, which uh, Church on the Hill folks have participated in. We're actually replicating that uh, as well here in the Valley. And so, uh, yeah, thanks again for, for being with us. So, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. So, Emily, um, tell us a little bit about, let's see, um, you're in Oregon, more or less, 29, 30 years, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you are running a counseling ministry called Equip to Counsel. Was that, um, is that, did that originate with you? Was that uh, something that you, God gave you or? Yeah. So I get to uh, be on staff at Salem Heights Church as the counseling training director. Mm. And so we have a couple ministries. One is our training ministry where we provide training called Equip to Counsel. Uh, where we look to Mm. equip people to come alongside others in the church, whether that's formal counseling, mentoring, just being a small group leader that has tools to work through suffering with somebody. And um, we not only do this for our church to train and equip our team, but we've um, been privileged to get to train a Mm. lot of churches here in the Willamette Valley, including Many groups from Church on the Hill over the years, including your wife, yeah, yeah. gotten to have Linda, she loved it. Yeah, Linda she loved in the it. class, which has been really awesome. A lot of your staff has gone through it. Um, Salem Heights also has a counseling ministry, so thankfully we have a team, and um, we have a great team that runs the counseling ministry where we provide bib- free biblical counseling to our church and to the community. And so I get to be a part of the leadership team for that too and um, get to uh, help provide biblical counseling myself and stay in practice in that. So. Nice. And do you have a, did you have a, was this your background, education and training, so forth? Like, yeah. I can give you a little bit about kind of how I got into all of this. Yeah. I'd, I'd, we'd be curious. I'd be yeah. curious. Yeah. Um, so at age 19, I was, I felt God calling me to vocational ministry and didn't really know how that would look in my life. And, um, Ended up going to Corbin University here in Salem and uh, majored in business and accounting, kind of thinking, I I do have administrative gifts, so probably I would work on the administrative end of ministry in some some way. And ended up getting hired by Salem Heights Church as their office administrator back right out of college. So I've worked there a long time, worked Worked with Justin since he was a youth guy, um, and now he's our senior pastor. So a long time in ministry there and loved it, loved being involved with the team and uh, just uh, getting to minister to people that came into the church on a daily basis and that kind of thing. But um, and, And I was young, and so like, what do you do at 22 with a you know, a call to ministry, youth, children, which which isn't my passion. And I knew I needed a few more gray hairs probably before <laughs> somebody would trust me as like a ministry director or anything like that. So ended up, um, when my kids got into first grade, all day school, I went to seminary and I um, was trying to decide what track to take. And yeah. I thought, well, I'm going to take this pastoral counseling track cuz I I ended up you know just doing a lot of talking to women that were struggling and thought this will be good I'll have my seminary education and then I'll get some tools just in how to help people right. but wasn't really considering counseling ministry at that time so it was through that 3 years where I worked on my uh, master's degree that um, I just felt more and more the call to care ministry in the church and I didn't really know how that would look. Simultaneously, Salem Heights was beginning to explore more on how to expand a lay team of counseling or care support for our pastors, as as you know. Yeah, like, take some of the load. Yeah, it's hard to you know, preach and administrate and lead a team and also 
do counseling appointments with yeah. people that are more than just a couple sessions because right. uh, so we can't really see them for eight or nine times because then we can't see the next crisis. And right. so how can we help support our wow. pastors? Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah, so um, so God was already working because he was putting on the heart of our senior pastor and elders of just like, how can we begin to just train people t- to help in this ministry, but didn't probably understand like the connection to the biblical counseling movement across the nation or the resources or the training or anything like that. So, so coming out of... Um, grad school, I went to the pastor that was over that at a t- that time and said, you know, what what can I do to just learn under you? Like, how can I serve to just get more experience in the room? And um, at that time, we uh, learned about the Association of Biblical Counselors, which is out of Dallas, Fort Worth. And um, one of my professors had actually said, hey, just based on what you wrote in this paper, have you heard of this organization? I feel like you would really line up with their mm. philosophy of care, mm. their doctrine. And and so kind of a, on a whim, a few of us just hopped on a plane and went to their conference wow. mm. and just really fell in love with the people, the training, and then found their training material, which is called Equip to Counsel. And so we thought, we looked through that and thought, wow, we've got to take this back to our church and go through it and see if this may be what we want to use to train Mm -hmm. our lay team of counselors. So we brought it back and um, went through it with a group of uh, women the first year. A few of us got certified as biblical counselors through their organization. And then the next year, we took our staff through it. Uh, And then the next year, we test piloted a group through it of just some of our people that were already doing a lot of our counseling and care ministry. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of by the fourth year, we had invited people from other churches that had just heard, like, we're doing this training and they want to come. So, um, and then I think we're in our 11th cohort this year, and uh, God has just given us the opportunity Mm -hmm. to train, you know, people from over 50 churches in the Willamette Valley in uh, counsel and care for people. Uh, How many people you think have been through? The ETC, I, I think the it's over like it. 600 people now That's in the valley. That's and the interesting thing is when I was going through this program in, in seminary, thinking like this is for me to learn how to care more for others, God really like put this call on my heart to say, you know, churches need to learn to care more for people. Like the church mm-hmm. needs to be where you run to when you're worried, when you run to when you're grieving. Mm-hmm. Um, and why are all these people in Oregon running outside the church to get help when right. we can be churches that know how to care? Huh, and so, so then I was like, but not just our church, like all churches, like why are we a place where People don't want to go, you know? What what's going on? Yeah, well, and we're not equipped. We're not, not equipped. To, no, and, no pun intended. We're just Yeah. And so I just was like, okay, so God put on my heart, like, that's what I want you to care about is equipping the church. And I thought, I don't know how to do that. Like I have no concept <laughs> what that would look like. And I I feel like, you know, I'm like a person that loves Jesus, that lives in Candelaria, that was raising my kids. I'm not a special person by any means. And God, you're saying like, you're going to be a part of something to to help equip the church to care for one another. And then he just brought the pieces, the connection to Mm -hmm. ABC, the hearts of our elders and pastors at a simultaneous time, feeling the same like call and vision to offer free biblical counseling to the community, and then through free counseling to the community, other pastors in other churches are saying, wait, you've helped our people. Like, how can we do that too? And so then they're starting to come. And and then it just has been God opening. Like, there's nothing in my life that has been so clear of like, God just saying, here's the next thing, here's the next thing, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you that, please yeah. do this, please yeah, do just that. just keep taking the next step. Yeah, and it's like, it's it's not because 
you know, I'm some highly qualified teacher <laughs> or like amazing counselor that has decades of experience. It's just because God says like, you know, here, here this is for you, you yeah. and your church to do. And we're going to, we're going to yeah. do this you're together. And you were available. You know, yeah. you said something, you used a term uh, earlier uh, that I want to just ask you about. You, you use the term counseling movement. Um, oh, yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm older, and I remember in the church, mm. let's just say the late 80s, 1990s, yeah. um, that th- there was a counseling movement. Mm. And what, can you talk about that? What did you mean when you said counseling movement? Yeah, I mean, there's a, I think in the Northwest, we don't know as much about all of that. Uh, it was just a little ear tickle back then. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what really what happened with with counseling is God God's design was always for the church to be the counseling hub, the social work hub yeah. for the for God's people, right? And so with the onset of modernism and psychology, um, at that same time, the church was really defending doctrine pretty strongly in the United States. So they're they're working on defending their their doctrinal stances for denominations mm-hmm. and all of that kind of thing. And and in comes these people that are studying human behavior. And so mm. uh, they're kind of, the church was so caught up in here that then they were like, oh, maybe we don't know anything now about worry. Maybe we don't know anything about trauma, s- trauma or psychological disorders. And then all these people are now starting to name them and oh, study them. So and, and so then the church just said, okay, we'll just refer out to that. Right. And so we started this, um, we started this kind of culture of like saying we're not equipped anymore because we don't know all the things that these people Because it's all know. science and the church isn't yeah. about science. Was that in there yeah, as well? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so we're going to refer out. So somewhere in like the late 70s, um, there was a couple people that came on the scene. One um, was Jay Adams, which maybe you've heard of Jay Adams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he started to – he was working like um, – I believe he was working in like a psychiatric hospital under um, somebody. And he kind of was like, wait, why is the church not involved in this? And so he started writing a book. He wrote a book called, I think it's called Competent to Counsel, um, about just saying, hey, we're we're called as believers to yeah. counsel. Yeah. And we're not doing it. We're referring out to all these It's these so methods. ironic, isn't it? The, mm. the Jesus that we serve is... His name is Wonderful Counselor. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, and I, the church had done that for years up until, you know, 100 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Emily, we have people uh, in our church that have have gotten education, higher education, mm-hmm. both in Christian universities and secular universities, non-Christian universities. Mm-hmm. What would you say if someone was like, well, what's the distinction mm-hmm. between biblical counseling mm-hmm. and everything else? Because mm-hmm. I think there's a stereotype of, oh, I'm going to a counselor, and again, it's science-based. Mm-hmm. It's an office with a couch mm-hmm. and a, mm-hmm. a and a gentleman or a woman, yeah. you know, they're smoking a pipe. And but but what do you see? Because you, you obviously you've made a distinction, mm-hmm. biblical counseling and yeah. maybe everything else that's out there. Yeah. Well, I think what what biblical counseling is is, you know, we believe the Word of God speaks to everything for life and godliness. And so that's every sin and struggle and mental health issue. And um, and so in biblical counseling, we're going to take the word and we're going to apply it to that. Right. And so I think the biblical counseling movement has made some some shifts and some good. So th- this guy, Jay Adams, you know, he was just the scriptures, nothing else. You don't mm-hmm. need anything. As the as the movement has grown, we've begun to say like, but what can we learn from psychology? What can we learn from science? science yeah. Right? Um, what things are, you know, God's word speaks to the renewing of our mind. You know, so science proves that out in that when we can um, we can work with somebody to 
develop a new pattern of thinking, you actually develop a neurological rut mm-hmm. that changes the mm-hmm. way that you think over time, right? Yeah, Science yeah. says that, but the Bible said that for years, right. right? That we can renew our mind, we can change with our brain and make it different, right? Yeah. Which is why you hear that term uh, people use, well, science is catching up with the Bible. Yes. Where we're told the Bible needs to catch up with science. Exactly. But, but the brain development piece... Um, Science has been studying the brain and yeah. all kinds of, again, neurological disorders, trauma, the effects of trauma. And we can learn from that. Yeah. We can totally learn from that. And so... Can, this, can you give me an example of what that might look like? Well, I think like, you know, we have the DSM-5, which is this diagnostic manual for psychology that explains what these different psychological disorders are. And if you have... a a certain amount of these things on the list for this disorder, then we can diagnose you with that, right? And that we're not going to find that in the Bible. We're not going to (laughs) find OCD in the Bible. And, but we can, um, but when somebody comes in and says, Hey, I have OCD or I've been diagnosed with OCD, a biblical counselor can surely understand what is that. I know about that. I know about the thinking patterns of somebody with OCD. I know about the, the, the ways that they get stuck mm-hmm. and they may need help from somebody else, uh, like a psychologist or psychiatrist to be able to help maybe with a medication or something, but we can still bring the word of God right, to, to that and yeah. to the suffering that that person experiences, mm-hmm. right? So, so I would say we're biblical counselors that are the way that we practice, and I don't know, that's, that's not the way everybody in the movement practices, is to say, like, we're informed about these things. We right. understand these things. We don't diagnose. That's not our lane. We don't prescribe. That's not our lane. But we understand what somebody says if they come in and say, I have this. And then we're going to sit and what the, talk about what the word, how the word speaks to their suffering. That's... Whereas, like, somebody in a... Um, I would say we love our LPC friends. We love our psychologist friends. Our Salem Heights has done, I think, a really good job at um, reaching out to the community just to inform them of like how what we are doing what in the community, yeah. and then embracing mm-hmm. those believers that are out there. Uh, vocationally and just serving the Lord in their practices around the town. Uh, We have uh, four or five times a year a group that comes of all biblical counselors, professional counselors, psychiatrists, psychologists come together, have lunch, encourage each other around God's word. It's a good spirit. In other words, it's not a spirit of competition, but cooperation. No, and to refer for us to have people that can prescribe a medication to somebody or can give a good diagnosis or can work with a kiddo in a way that we wouldn't be able to do um, is just such a blessing. And then for them, it's just, it's so amazing when they say, hey, I have this person who, you know, loves the Lord and just really needs to be, um, her next step is to just sit in God's word through yeah. her stuff. And yeah. you um, can you see my child's par- client parent mm-hmm. and walk them through just parenting a child that's suffering? I'm yeah. working with the child, you're working with that. So, you know, the thing about counseling is you don't know what you're going to get. You know, your counselor is is not God, is not, right. you know, right. is hopefully a wise person who's, who loves people and has studied um, well and has a good group around them to help to consult and help mm-hmm. you with. But like, you, you don't know who that person is. Yeah. Um, and if they're not bringing the word of God, then then it's methods, which can be really helpful. Um, it's things mm-hmm. they've learned in school, which can be really helpful. Um, but uh, but then we do have our our friends that are believers and are out as working as therapists that just bring wonderful truths of the word and pray with people and encourage yeah. them yeah. and a whole other and yeah and so there's not a competition in that yeah, um, yeah. we're and, all after the same yeah. thing which is a, you know you you listen to provokes so many questions I'm going to try to remember them uh, the one the first one I had is um uh two things what if you could lump, if that's even possible, might not be a fair question, but 
what would you say if someone said, what's the majority of issues that you deal mm-hmm. with, with people coming for counseling? Mm-hmm. Is it, is it mostly is trauma? Is it mostly this, mostly that? Yeah. Is there something that you would say, oh, uh, there's a large portion of it is this? Yeah. I, I would say that what I tell people in this day is and age, anything that's going on outside the church is in the church too. <laughs> so all of the issues, Bruce, right. all of the issues, uh, we the church people and other people, everybody exactly, struggles. Exactly, anxiety, depression, marital troubles, sexual abuse, mm-hmm, trauma, mm-hmm. addiction, eating disorders, yeah. mental health issues, parenting issues. Um, right. Everything. Who doesn't relate to that? Uh, gender issues, yeah. all of those things. Yeah. Everything that you see outside of the church should be in a church because to be a healthy church, we want to minister to all those people yeah. that are hurting, right? And so then they show up to counseling. Um, and so we have a team that's gone through a lot of training in order to help them. And, and we do reach out to our community partners when we get stuck or when something is like, okay, this is more than we have training in. What do you um, mean when you say get stuck? I just want to yeah, make sure I understand. Just get like, stuck. Like, um, you know, I, I had a, a person one time who – uh, just had extreme trauma from being in a different country that had um, that had genocide and rape of women and mm-hmm. all these, and now she's come here as a refugee, and mm-hmm. she's uh, we she's so stuck, she's so stuck, and we we don't know what we didn't know kind of where to go with her, like we couldn't even get movement. So able to call one of our um, highly trained friends in town and actually bring her into the picture. So like we want to be a church that says, we're not going to just refer you out, but we're going to we're going to get some help, but we're going to continue to be one of the pieces of the pie right. for you. Yeah. So we're going to be mm. your church. We're going to mm. encourage you in the word of God, but like you you got to have somebody that kind of knows how to work with oh, with somebody so with that type of a situation. So, so Which brings me to my you actually touched on my second question. Mm. Um there's all kinds of conversation today about the pandemic is over, yeah. but the pandemic of loneliness continues. Oh, yeah. That that was the the fallout, the major fallout of people mm-hmm. being disconnected mm-hmm. and so forth. What part does in and from your you know the, your guys's point of view, you're trying to help them get back on track. You're trying to help mm-hmm. them um, um, deal with whatever issues and find some place of health. Being part of a community, yeah. How many? How, how, in your opinion, like being part of a healthy community, how big is that to you guys? How many times do I meet with somebody and think, this person needs a friend? They don't need me. <laughs> they need a friend. That simple. Yeah. like they What need, kind of friend do they need? They need somebody that will talk with them, walk with them, point them to Christ, encourage them. A lot of people that we see are actually really disconnected people. So our really connected people and community groups and mm-hmm. like we're not seeing them unless there's a major crisis going on in their life and they're just, they really need some extra help. Yeah. But really if like they're plugged in and your ground troops in the church are doing a good job with caring and loving and being a friend, they they often don't need a counselor. And I've talked to my LPC friends too out in the community and just said, hey, do you feel like this too? Like your clients are just someone... A lot of them are just someone that really needs a friend to talk to. And They're they, alone. They have no friends. They or? have no friends or they have nobody that they feel like they can trust, trust. Yeah. or that they can be authentic with or that will be authentic back with them. And, and they say, yeah, that's that's many of our clients are just somebody that doesn't have anybody to live in an authentic relationship that's so with. so amazing. So what you're saying is that basically we're missing just some very fundamental practices Mm-hmm. That are found in the Word of God mm-hmm. of being part of a church, yeah. uh, a local church, yeah, or, or exactly. a part of a community of believers, whatever you want to call it—a healthy community, yeah. having a healthy community. We did a little um, kind of statistical survey of kind of who we've had coming in recently for counseling from our church, and I can't remember the percentage, but it was very high that these were new people to our church reaching out to counseling, like had been there in the last year or so that we're just not plugged in. And so counseling was an easy place to say, I need help. 
you know, and they're going through stuff. Sure, they're going through stuff. But how many of them would maybe not reach out if they had already gotten plugged into a really healthy community group where people, they're sharing each week, they're praying for each other, they have somebody from their group reaching out and having coffee with them and... I, I always tell our Which church... Which isn't complicated, right? No. And I always tell our church and I tell other churches that want to start counseling ministries, it's like, if we could go back and do it again, I would start a... I would like start training the ground troops even more and and giving them tools to like walk alongside marriages, parenting yeah. troubles, yeah. anxiety, yeah. you know, yeah. things like that. And it's like... Then maybe we're out of a job. You know, we're just seeing really the community hot, gets healthy. And- yeah, we have. We're seeing harder things like domestic abuse or walking through sexual abuse or things like that. But but the the community is caring well for its people, and then we don't need the counseling ministry as yeah. much. And and we are seeing that as we've kind of said, hey, we don't want to be this silo of a counseling ministry over there like, hey, now we're the specialists inside the church to handle all the trouble. We right. want to say like, hey, we're here for the for some tough things because there are going to be really tough things. But like, c- hey, small group leader, can you walk alongside this person? Mm. Uh, we'll help you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just being um, and a friend. because they're gonna they're gonna have better care from them, and that's why I love counseling ministry in the church, Bruce, is because now it's like we've met with a gal three or four times, and now we say like, "Hey, we have this community group for you. These mm-hmm. people are your age. Are you your hand kids them in? off, so to speak. Yeah, can put them in family. Yeah, and like they're gonna continue. We got you unstuck in your mm-hmm. thinking. Um, or we we got you thinking a, bit, a little bit differently about your situation. It may not be gone or alleviated, but now this group is going to continue to love you and yeah. care for you. And when we see somebody from another church, we love that too, but it's a lot harder to make those connections. Yeah, yeah. and, and it, you said something interesting. You get them unstuck, but what you're also giving them is the next steps to stay yeah. unstuck, right? Because yeah. otherwise... Yeah, and keep growing. Yeah, keep but growing. they might get stuck again. Yeah. So... Oh, Emily, I have a question. Uh, this is a pastoral question. So yeah. we're both pastors, you know, in, in, in different maybe forms. But yeah. what do you say? What would you say to somebody who said, well, you know, because I think you and I both know that a lot of pain has come from the church itself. Yeah. People have been hurt in church. Yeah. They've been betrayed in a church. They've yeah. been even abused in a church, yeah. which is, as a pastor, one of the most grieving things and heartbreaking things I can think of. So... What we see in the last 10 years are all these statistics, Barna and so forth, you mm-hmm. know, people are leaving the church, people don't need the church mm-hmm. anymore. What would you say to somebody that said, I still, I love Jesus, but I don't like the church. Mm-hmm. I, I don't love the church. Mm-hmm. I can't, what would you say to somebody who came in and yeah. I can't believe that you haven't yeah. heard that already? Yeah, we do hear that. I think counseling ministry can be like a back door for some of those people to get back to the church because like... One on one, we can be the, you know, the hands of Jesus in that situation mm. with them and help them to even to work through how they got there with their church hurt and pain. Um, this generation in particular is more willing to come in for a counseling appointment than to walk in into a, a church service. <laughs> into a church service. <laughs> and so we get that a lot. And mm. so how can we be like the the bridge builder back to saying like this is a this is a healthy community or we hear your how you work sitting with them in their suffering of how they were hurt um, and really working through that with them to really help them then to understand you know even who God is mm-hmm. and where was God yeah where was he mm-hmm. uh, you know what what does the gospel mean to them and and how does that impact them and then how like we can begin starting to trust the church again. Mm-hmm. Um, and We're in a series right now uh, here at Church on the Hill on Sunday morning called The Truth About Lies. Mm-hmm. And it's the whole series is about, is based on this idea of there are certain falsehoods that are very popular and the majority just constantly, the media, whoever, mm-hmm. churn out, mm-hmm. but we've believed them to our own detriment mm-hmm. where we're suffering just because... Yeah. A lot of our suffering is because we believe bad stuff. We have engaged bad ideas and allowed them to kind of take root. 
How does that, what is that, uh, what role does counseling play in the realignment? Like you, mm-hmm. you mentioned the scripture, be transformed by the renewing of yeah. your mind. Yeah. Well, I think it gives you a chance to unpack that with somebody, you know, and when, when, when you're, a good counselor, you're going to listen to their story. You're going to listen mm-hmm. to, um, you're going to be listening to where their thinking doesn't really align with the truth of God's word yeah. in actuality. And then we're going to try to put uh, sessions together. And part of biblical counseling, which is a little different, is just having kind of homework or growth assignments between where Mm, we're going to give them something to read, uh, think about, questions to answer, that hopefully the Spirit of God is going to show up for them and start to do the work. The Spirit of Truth. Yeah, and that's that's probably one of the things that I love most about biblical counseling is, and, and you know this as a pastor doing pastoral counseling, it's the Word of God, the people of God, and the Spirit of God, and mm-hmm. we all come together. And so um, it's not just a dialogue between two people, it's a trialogue. I mean, yeah. we have the Spirit of God yeah. with us, and He's the one that's going to do the work in their heart in between sessions. Mm-hmm. And so we have to trust trust Him for that. He's going to work out those things Um through the truth of his word, and he's going to transform them yeah. um, through the process. And in that transformation process, their eyes are going to be open and the scales are going to fall off their eyes to what the truth is and what the lies that they are believing. Yeah, yeah. And so there's good. nothing, there's just nothing as more cool or amazing that, you know, we sit with a person and maybe we prepared a little bit because we know what they're coming in with or we've met with them a few times and so we put some preparation in and they come in and it wasn't what you did last week. It's what God did the mm-hmm. whole week in between. And they come in and say like, he showed me this and he showed me this and he wow. showed me this. And then we're able to go like, okay, I'm – they're not going this direction anymore. They're here, and They've I'm going to p- pivot. And then the Spirit of God brings the Word of God to your mind, and you're able to just give them kind of the next thing or the next passage. Um, and you leave that session, and you went, I didn't do anything. Yeah. Like, God, you did it all in the week before. You yeah. gave me a Come passage on. for the week that mm-hmm. I wasn't even th- – I hadn't thought about in eight years. It got brought to my mind to share with them. And they leave and you think, wow, this has nothing to do with me and all to do with you mm-hmm. transforming them. And so that's that's the the awesome mm-hmm. thing is God shows up. Yeah. So it does it's not about me. It's a partnership. Yeah. I love how you put that, the trilogue. Uh uh, we 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 say that in marriage uh, counseling a lot. There's yeah. when two people are in conflict. There's your opinion. There's your opinion. But then there's God's opinion. Yeah. And finding God's opinion tends to resolve. Yeah. Most exactly. Most of what we, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I could I could see practicing out as a therapist. You know, there's lots of things that you have to offer. There's methods that work great for helping somebody with OCD or ADHD or mm-hmm. whatever you're working through. And and I don't want to discount that at all because there's just great work being done. But when the Spirit of God shows up and the Word of God makes the scales fall off somebody's eyes, like there's mm-hmm. nothing more transformative yeah. Yeah. because that's and, heart transformation. Right, yeah, powerful stuff. Yeah, so to get to be a part of that is just like wild to think like God allows me to even just get to watch that, to be on the front lines of watching him yeah. change people and change their lives. Isn't that amazing? Oh, there's so many other questions I have, but I think we're, we're out of time. But yeah, um, yeah. and um, if someone uh, wanted to reach out, they just... Uh, yeah, they can go to our website, shccounseling.org. Um, There's information about our training programs on there. Equip to Counsel starts uh, at the end of September. There's still some seats left if if people are interested mm-hmm. in getting trained. And that's a semester it's, block? It's an eight-month oh, eight month. class. Okay. We meet approximately 14 times okay. over the eight months. And so we have a... Uh, fall workshop on anxiety, November 7th, which is just a community workshop for anybody that might be struggling or walking alongside somebody that's, that's struggling. That's interesting. 
a, com- a, com- a workshop on anxiety. Yes. November 7th. And, yes. and that's at Salem Heights yep. Church. Just show up, 6.30. There's information on the website about that. And if, if you need counseling, um, you know, reach out on our website too. But Church on the Hill ha- yeah. is raising up a great team. Yeah. We're going to launch in the fall. Yeah. And if we get a Church on the Hill person, a lot of times we'll call up here and say, hey, did you know your church has counseling too? And they say, really? I'd rather go there. And that's where we would rather that's them so go, great. so oh that they're gosh. getting cared for by uh, their own people. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we have we have a request for counseling on our website too, and would love to have anybody join us for any of those yeah. trainings. Yeah. So, I'd privilege. love to have you back again if you, if you had the time, because yeah. there's so many questions I I have as you talk that come to my mind that I'm yeah. sure would be interesting. That'd be to fun. The whole bunch I'd love of people to. listening. Listen, thanks for being with us. Yeah. Thanks for all that you do for the mm. body of Christ yes. and for the community at large and for being, like you said, mm. the, the hands and feet of, of Jesus. It's, yeah. it's just amazing. It's a joy. Yeah. And uh, if listen, if this has helped any of you watching, pass it along to somebody. Just like this podcast, send it on, forward it to somebody. And if you're listening to this and you'd like to take advantage of any of the resources that Emily has mentioned, go to that website, right, mm. and, and check it out. So yeah. thanks for being with us. I hope the end of your summer goes well. School starting next week. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Already. So, um, yeah, peace on you, grace on you. If we can pray or there's anything we can do for you, reach out to us here at the office at Church on the Hill. And otherwise, have a great rest of your week. God bless.